Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute. And today's question is, how can you enhance athletic performance under pressure? And this is an interesting one, it's a personal one for me. Um, I'll tell you my story here briefly, is I played college baseball and in my senior year I had the yips. The yips is basically um, when you can't throw the ball on a very easy throw. So it typically happens for catchers like me, uh, throwing back to the pitcher, but it could also happen for pitchers throwing over to first base or second base. It could happen for second baseman throwing to first base. A very easy throw becomes difficult. What happens is, uh, for me at least, I was throwing the ball either into the dirt to the pitcher or over the pitcher's head because I was gripping the ball too hard and I wasn't just throwing the ball how I, how I did for you know 20 years before that. And so um, for me, how I got past it was just trying to relax my mind and just breathe and just throw the ball like normal. Um, and I did need to throw fast or hard back to the pitcher, which normally doesn't happen or doesn't need to happen. But how does this relate to athletic performance under pressure? Um, so there are a lot of sports that have, that it's important to have finesse um, and accuracy. Um, these include pitching a baseball, uh, throwing a baseball. You can think about a tennis serve. Um, what about uh, shooting a basketball, shooting free throws, um, especially in a, in a basketball game because um, it's just one thing that there's no real, like, uh, there's no immediate pressure to shoot, but there's obviously pressure on you to make the shot. Um, <clears throat> and there are many others. Um, and so what happens is in a game, there's pressure, but that pressure um, should not really matter because the person has either shot the, shot the basketball, thrown the baseball, done the tennis serve, millions of times before through practice and the nervous system has been able to to function to to work with that through practice but under pressure the brain the cognition aspect the frontal lobe the conscious portion starts to take over and tries to micromanage something that is so simple micromanage something that the person has done millions of times before and so what we can do is there are different ways that we can kind of turn off that conscious processing and just let the brain do its thing. Let the let the unconscious movement of throwing the ball, shooting the basketball, just take over. Um, and we'll talk about an article here discussing that. So getting into this article, it's called Preventing a Loss of Accuracy of the Tennis Serve Under Pressure. Uh, it's from PLOS One. Uh, I think it is from yeah, 2021 here. Okay. If we look at the abstract, um, it's been shown that dynamically squeezing the left hand for people that are left hand dynamic, or sorry, left hand dynamic hand grip. So for people, uh, basically squeezing the left hand has been shown to be effective in preventing choking under pressure in right handers in a variety of sports. So here they, um, 20 right handed, highly skilled junior athletes performing eight tennis serves, uh, either without pressure pre-test or with pressure post-test. Um, the, what they found was basically the serving accuracy of the group performing the hand grip on the right with their dominant hand decreased significantly from pre to post test. But if they gripped the, the tennis ball with, uh, on the left hand, it remained stable without pressure or with pressure. Um, and so basically it indicated that the left hand dynamic hand grip could be effective in preventing reduced accuracy of the tennis serve in competition um, to prevent choking under pressure. The technique could also be, or could easily be uh, integrated into tennis player serving routines and promote stable match performance in competitions. Okay, so why does this work? Um, so we're gonna kind of like talk through the, uh, through the uh, introduction here. Um, and so obviously here it is given certainly given performance can be labeled choking only if it is obvious that the individual had an intention to and yet was unable to perform better so basically generally people want to perform better at their sport and so they might will they might 
try to micromanage a skill that they've been practicing for years or for weeks prior to competition. Um, so definition of choking as an acute or considerable decrease in skill execution and performance when self-expected standards are normally achievable, resulting from an increased anxiety under pressure or under perceived pressure. Um, so anxiety happens all the time in sports. Um, there's a lot of pressure to do well, whether it's internal pressure, whether it's pressure from your teammates or coaches or parents, um, and that happens. <clears throat> and so neuroscience has identified neural correlates of anxiety. Um, we know that anxiety can affect the motor automation of sports. So expert experts and elite athletes show high automation or automation of motor skills. So this is referred to the high neural efficiency because of a limited number of neural connections in the brain is sufficient to generate a skill executed in contrast to a novice. So basically, you have these connections that have been practiced over and over and over, and they've been uh, primed and pruned and weaned so that it's this nice, solid routine of connection, and it should just happen naturally. When the brain or when the frontal lobe, when the conscious mind starts to try to micromanage these skills, things get off. So in an attempt to consciously control the execution of the highly automated skill, uh, it can interfere with a smooth execution resulting in increased variance of movement, okay? Um, EEG studies have showed a strong activation in brain areas related to conscious processing in experienced athletes who choke under pressure. So basically brain waves change with people under pressure and therefore can lead to problems with this uh, or very variance um, in this movement. Um, okay, practicing a motor skill decreases conscious processing and improves performance, which is why practice, practice, practice makes perfect because we can constantly practice it. We don't have to then think about the skill later. Um, so for in this present study, the dominant activation of the left brain hemisphere is associated with increased cognitive control. So dominant hemisphere in, in most humans, if you're right-handed, dominant hemisphere is going to be your left brain. And so people are using their right hand to serve in this study. Uh, it could be right hand to shoot basketball, it could be right hand to throw, whatever it may be. Um, and so that left brain has more cognitive control, but it also controls that right, right hand. Um, and so clenching of the left hand to eliminate the dominant left hemispheric activation can then, what it can do is it can kind of settle, it can calm the brain down so that therefore just that unconscious processing of the motor action is being able to be fulfilled. Um, and so this is done in, uh, in multiple other people. The, the studies reduced accuracy um, in football penalty shooting or soccer penalty shooting, taekwondo kicks, badminton under pressure, um, all by squeezing the ball, okay? Um, so if this was a left-handed uh, server, left-handed pitcher, left-handed anything, you'd probably squeeze your, the, right, the ball with the right hand to then relax the, um, the right-sided um, hemisphere so that then it can be natural moving with the left. Okay, um, so they showed, again, if we go back to the abstract, this study showed the, uh, the importance of um, doing this and, and basically preventing a lack of um, or a decrease in accuracy under pressure. So if we come back, the, the best thing to do to improve or enhance uh, athletic performance under pressure is to be able to calm the conscious mind, right? And hone into things that have been practiced constantly. Um, this can be through meditation before the game, before the competition. Um, and then during the competition, maybe these slight mantras or breaths that can bring back the mind to just settle and allow the unconscious mind to just perform. Um, and obviously using some sort of hand grip, okay, in the non-dominant hand, the non-throwing hand, the non-serving hand, um, whether it's gripping a towel, gripping a ball, gripping um, anything that might be to try to decrease the brain activation for the dominant hand to just perform. Um, I, I know this is this this article is kind of specific uh, in athletics, but at the same time, I think it's a good one to understand how kind of how choking works, choking under pressure works, and so I think it can be beneficial for multiple athletes to find uh, what helps them to to bring their mind back 
and to to focus on um, not the skill that they that they're necessarily doing because the skill is is there, but just their mindset around the uh, the performance. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. If you have any suggestions for future topics, please leave them below. Thanks again and have a great day. Stay healthy.